Good morning. I want to thank you for joining me today, and we're going to delve into some scripture uh, that addresses our faith journey. I've had a little bit of change in uh, my heart in regards to how I felt God, the Holy Spirit, leading me, uh, what to, what to, what type of message to bring to you today. I know last week I said that we were going to uh, start diving into the book of Daniel and take a look at some of those prophetic words in Daniel uh, that people have always uh, associated with the times that we live in today. But, you know, things happen during the week and, and um, I've, had some, I've had some things happen uh, this week uh, in regard to, some, to, to, to a friend of our families that had an accident and um, sadly and unfortunately uh, uh, lost his life. Um, he, uh, he was a, a great young man and uh, he will be sorely, sorely missed. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it brings to life, I think, one of those questions that uh, a lot of us have especially as, as believers. And I think the question is this, why do bad things happen to good people? And I want to look at that this morning and I want to, you know, hopefully build your faith up because, you know, it, it applies just to living, but I think it applies even, even more so to the, the day and age that we live in because there, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. And, and I need to know the direction uh, that my life is going in, and I need to know uh, what God has in store for me. So we're going to look at some something a little different this morning, and and my you know my hope is to encourage you and to build your faith, and and you know that you can that, that when you face these uncertain times or circumstances in your life, that you can stand strong and you can stand in faith, and you can come to a point where you expect God to operate and move on your behalf. And we've got, we've got to stop thinking that it doesn't matter, uh, you know, that our prayers make no difference. It doesn't matter what I say. You know, it doesn't matter who, uh, you know, who I agree with. My friends, the word is still the word, and it's still the truth. This is all that I have to go on. Uh, this this is this is our life right here, and so we need to, to look at the scripture and let it help us understand what we can do to change the circumstances and situations that we may find ourselves in. I mean, there's times that 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 we have emergencies, and we need God to intervene. And uh, I want to put myself in a position that when I pray, that I know that God is going to intervene on my behalf. So I want you to grab your Bibles with me, and we're gonna, we're gonna take a look first in the book of Deuteronomy, <clears throat> chapter 30. You know, we're, we're gonna look today at uh, some answers to one of life's most troubling questions, and it is why do bad things happen to good people? Why is unexpected hardship so common in the lives of people that consider themselves to be part of the family of God? I mean, if there's really a God or a God who cares, then why do we have so much suffering, so many things going wrong in our world? You know, I, th I thought God was supposed to be this, this, this loving being who had <clears throat> the hairs on our head numbered. <clears throat> well, if that's true, and there really is a God that, that gives a rip, then why is the world in such a mess? Why is there so much human suffering? Why, why do we see the wars and the hunger, <clears throat> the pain, homelessness, sickness, disease, death. I mean, why is so much of that 
present in this world if God really does care about us? And of course, the answer to that question is the first step that we make toward God. Understanding the reasons why bad things happen to good people is important for your own uh, personal pursuit and your commitment to God. <clears throat> the answer to the question is really quite easy. It's ignorance. Ignorance to the plan and the purpose of God for your life. Ignorance to the spiritual laws that govern all of our lives. See, that's the primary contributor to why bad things happen to good people. <clears throat> I want to look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. <clears throat> verses 19 and 20. God's, God's speaking here, and he says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. So he's, he's laid before us life and death, Blessing and cursing, listen to this. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Now, in the New Testament, it tells us that, that you and I are also the children of, of, of Abraham, that we are, are heirs of Jesus Christ. So the first spiritual law that I want to talk to you about this morning has to do with the, the fact of your free moral agency. Now, probably the most well-known, most quoted scripture in the Bible, the entire Bible, is John 3.16. And he says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And oftentimes we just, we, we stop with that with that one verse, but you really can't stop there. You've got to continue to read. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In verse 18, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, God, God's telling us right here, it's not my will for any person to perish. But see, God will never override our own free moral agency. We are not uh, uh, robots that God has created to control. This is a spiritual law. So whether you experience death and cursing or life and blessing, it is a product of your choice. It's our choice. So, so the choices that I've made to this point today have defined my life up to this very moment. And that's, that's a hard thing for a lot of people to hear because we want to we, we want to have a scapegoat. We want to to blame our our shortcomings and our failures on a variety of other factors. Well, you know, my life is 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 messed up because uh, you know I had I, I've had a, a a lot of tragedy and and a lot of distress in my life. 
You know, my life is messed up because I was abused as a child. My father was an alcoholic. He used to beat me. Uh, or the color of my skin is wrong. And so I've been discriminated against. Now, I am in no means making light of, of abuse or of discrimination. But it is a fact that the Bible says that we are all equal in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what color of skin you, are, you have. It doesn't matter what the cultural heritage you grew up in. It doesn't matter what social uh, standing you may have, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman. It says we are all equal in Christ. The Bible says God is no respecter of persons. So if that's the case, then I can't blame the condition of my life on these external circumstances. See, he says that you have the ability to make choices that will take you to life and blessing instead of death and cursing, period, the end. And before we can do anything that's going to improve our lot in life, we must take personal responsibility for the condition of our lives and realize that every choice that we make can either be put in the category of life and blessing or death and cursing. And there's another law that I wanna talk about also. Paul calls it the law of the mind. And we find that law in the book of Romans chapter seven. The book of Romans chapter seven. We're gonna read verses 21 through 23. Paul says, I find then a law that evil is present within me, the one who wills to do good. And I mean, okay, this is the apostle Paul talking here, all right? I mean, he's like our, our hero. You know, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. So he's like our hero. So he says, I find in a law that evil is present within me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, in my flesh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members or my flesh. So see, there's a law regarding the way God created your mind to operate. And it will produce certain results in certain instances, whether you like it or not, or whether you believe in it or not. And that law basically comes down to this. Whatever you imagine in your mind, will be the direction that your life will go. And the word, the word for mind in the Greek here is literally, it, it literally means imagination. Imagination. You know, in Genesis chapter 11, there were a people that were unregenerate. They had no covenant with God. And the Bible talks about how they were building this tower that would reach into the heavens. And the Lord said this about those people. He said, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And so you, you understand these people didn't even know God. This is true whether you know it or not or whether you believe it or not. See, the thoughts that dominate your view for the future are descriptive of the way that your life is going to go. So if you fill your mind with all of these, these negative thoughts, you know, if you're gonna be, you know, if you're gonna be down on yourself and down on everybody else, guess what? Your life is going to go down that pathway 
of negativity and defeat. And that doesn't happen by accident because it's a product of what you've put your mind to. If it's constantly what you think on, I guarantee you, you your life will go down that pathway. In a good sense, when you fill uh, your mind with what God says about you, things like, by his stripes, you are healed. Things like, you are more than a conqueror. When you fill your mind with those kind of truths, you will see yourself uh, overcoming challenges and circumstances. You will see yourself succeeding in the business uh, arena. When you fill your mind with imagery of what God has shown you by his Holy Ghost, it takes you in that direction because it's a spiritual law. But see, many people allow their lives to be dictated by fear and anxiety, uh, by thoughts of, of hopelessness. And that's the path they go on. So instead of the word of God dictating what they focus their minds upon, they, become, they begin to become fearful about not having enough money or fearful of, of contracting some dreadful disease or fearful of, of, of their relationship falling apart or fearful that they will lose everything that they own. So they begin to build this image in their minds of their future based upon the fear. And it's a spiritual law that determines if we walk down that path. They might be good people. They might be the best people that we know, but they don't know that there's spiritual laws that govern our lives. The law of the mind says what you fill your, your, your mind with will provide direction to your physical life. So we see, we see bad things happen to good people because we've got this mental imagery and it's drawn us into, in, into this, this, this hopelessness or drawn us into a, a fear of, of sickness and disease or poverty and lack, uh, you know, that fear of, of divorce or fear of broken relationships. You know, it causes people to see the future in negative terms, and then that brings bad things into their lives. Now, I want to change directions here. And I want to look about the laws that require faith for their activation and their operation. We know that, ev that, that anything that has to do with our covenant with God requires an exercise of faith. So I want you to look in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at verse 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Here it is. For the law of the Spirit of life, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and and death. So sin and death is a law. It says that right here. It works whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not. Sin is nothing more than disobedience to the word of God. That's all sin is. Disobedience to the word of God. And that will always have a result of death. In a spiritual sense, death is separation from God. In a physical sense, death is separation of your spirit 
from your body. You don't cease to exist, okay? You are a spirit. You are a spirit man or woman. And you will and you're going to live on for an eternity. The only question that I have is where and how. Now it says here that if disobedience describes your life, then then eventually you're going to be you're, you're going to become separated from God eternally. You see, walking down the, the, the pathway of disobedience also has a detrimental effect upon your physical life. If you constantly expose yourself to negative things, uh, you know, I guarantee you it will eventually destroy your physical body. But Paul says that there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ that has set me free from the law of sin and death. And Paul's talking right here about your covenant with God. Do you believe that you have a covenant with God? I mean, you can't just say, well, hallelujah, I'm born again. You know, and that be it. That you just expect all these, these wonderful things to happen in your life. All the benefits of your covenant with God must be appropriated by faith. My friends, you've got to act on the word of God. Don't just give God mental assent. There's a lot of uh, believers that just give God mental assent. They, they just they believe that he exists. They, they believe that he's out there in some form. But man, you've got, to, you've, you've got to believe that Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. You've got to believe this. These things only come to the people that believe. Believe that Jesus is the son of God. Believe that Jesus died for you. Believe that Jesus went into the heart of this earth for three days and paid the penalty for sin. Only if you believe is this true for you. I want to look in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 24. First Peter 2, 24. Peter writes, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Now there's an operative word here. You were healed, not are. You were healed. He did all of this on the cross. See, the same time that Jesus took care of the sin problem, he also took care of of the sickness problem, the disease problem. Jesus came to do this in fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah 53. He fulfilled that prophetic word by paying the penalty, not only for our sin, but he atoned for sickness in the human body. So by the stripes of Jesus, you and I were healed. Well, I'm sick. I have this disease. You know, I'm suffering from this ailment. If I'm supposed to be healed, then why, you know, am I still sick? Why am I still uh, suffering from all of this? My friends, the answer is very simple. Because we receive it the same way we receive our salvation, by faith. The only way you got saved 
was by faith. You didn't get saved because your mom and dad made you pray some little prayer of salvation. You didn't get saved because you went through some confirmation class at church. You didn't get saved because you were sprinkled as a little baby. You're still going to hell if somebody made you do that and you didn't believe it by faith. You get saved because you believe and you get healed when you believe that it's part of my covenant with God. See, these are laws that will work on our behalf, but they only work by faith. I've got to switch on faith. Look with me in Galatians chapter three. Galatians chapter three. I'm going to write, we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having became or having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham, so, so he was, he's redeemed us from the curse of the law, became the curse for us, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that's you and I, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit through faith, and you might go, well, uh, what's, this, uh, what's this blessing of Abraham that he's talking about here? Well, I'm gonna show it to you really quick. Genesis 24, 35, it says, the Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he's given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants, camels and donkeys. My friends, the blessing of, 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 of Abraham are all of these great and wonderful things poured down into your life. So we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. What's the curse of the law? The law is not a curse. The law is the word of God. It's God's direction for our life. But there's a curse that still comes when we choose to disobey. If you want to understand about all the blessings and cursing, all the blessings and curses, then I encourage you to go read Deuteronomy chapter 28. The first 15 verses are all of the blessings that will overtake you if you obey God. The next 60 or so verses are all of the curses that are associated with, with disobedience. And those, vir those, those curses virtually cover every ailment, every adversity that is known to mankind. You want to read about it? Look in Deuteronomy 28. I'm talking about sickness and disease. I'm talking about relationship problems. I'm talking about, about kids serving the devil. I'm talking about uh, marriages falling apart. I'm talking about insufficiency, lack, and poverty. I'm talking about financial distress. I'm talking about all of these things. And it says all of that is under the curse. But the Bible says that Jesus paid the price for the curse. He paid the price for you not to be poor. He prayed the, paid the price for you not to have lack in your life. It's a spiritual law that you have through Jesus Christ, but you've got to believe it, my friends. Faith is the only way it is activated, and it's the only way that it'll come. So see, we can sum it all up 
in this. Bad things happen to good people, first of all, because they don't know the laws. As Christians, we need to search out the laws of God's word because these, it, it governs our life. God's laws govern our lives, whether we know it or not. The choices that I make every day need to be deliberate, deliberate, because you're either making a choice of life or you're making a choice of death a choice of cursing or a choice of blessing. But see, you know, you know some of this stuff I'm ta talking to you about right now, a lot of you are going, I didn't know any of this. And that's the problem is because a lot of Christians don't know anything about spiritual laws. They don't know that what they do with their minds, with their imagination begins to direct the path of their life. They don't know that if they allow these vain imaginations to fill their mind, that it's going to take them down the wrong path. And then there's this other group of people. They know about it, but they don't have any faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. It's not enough just to have somebody teach you about the laws of God. Since your covenant with God is only activated by faith, that's the key that activates your, your, uh, your covenant with God. You've got to hear it enough for your faith to come. What you believe today is a product of what you've heard the most of. So if you've sat in church and they've just kind of given you nothing but shallow teachings, rote uh, sayings, uh, a doctrine that, that, that didn't make a lot of sense, then that created in you the product of what you've become today. The Bible says faith or believing comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you grew up being told that you are just a loser, that you'll never amount to anything in your life. If you grew up being told that, that you don't fit in or, or, or people snubbing you and making you feel as if, as if you don't matter in their little circle of influence, you know, your, your parents, your teachers, your, uh, you know, the people that sit in the pews next to you, everybody uh, of some importance in your life, if they, if they constantly give you that, that, uh, that negative vibe, constantly let you know that you're nothing, that you won't amount to anything, then I, I'm telling you, you will be a loser. You'll believe that and you'll become what you believe. You believe, you, you believe what you hear the most. So you've got to come to a decision, to a point that I'm going to believe what the word says. It's not enough to say, well, you know, you know, brother, I, I, I believe, I believe what's in the Bible. No, that's just mental assent. You recognize that, hey, yeah, this is the Bible. This is God's word. You know, I agree with it, but that's nothing, that's nothing more than mental assent. It stays mental assent until you have heard it enough heard it enough, heard it enough to, cho to, to change your belief system. And that will change your destiny. All of my life, this is a hard lesson for me. All of my life, I have known that by his stripes, you are healed. 
and I have mentally agreed to that word. I've prayed for people. I've prayed for myself. I've had people pray for me. I've watched people pray for other people. I mentally agreed with the word, but I honestly did not see much happen. So see, something was wrong here with my uh, ability to, to take a hold of this spiritual law and apply it to my life. You know, I really, I guess I really didn't start to, to agree with that until the last decade or so. And that's when I, I, I began speaking words of healing. You know, I wanted to hear the words of healing. You know, I wanted those, those words of healing to become ingrained in my heart. And it's only when you do this does the law, the spiritual law of by his stripes you are healed becomes a controlling influence in your heart and then begins to control your life and control the lives of the people that you pray for. So the first reason that bad things happen to good people is because they don't understand the spiritual laws that govern life. The second reason, they know the laws, like me, they know the laws, but they haven't heard the covenant laws enough for faith to come in. So they may know, but they're not in a place of faith. Faith has not been activated. That will change the circumstance. And I need to touch on one more thing real quick before I quit. When I say bad things happen to good people, I'm talking about the outcome. The outcome of the challenge that, that we may face. It's not a bad thing if you had cancer but you got gloriously healed. It's not a bad thing if you had a financial crisis but you stood in faith and God met your needs supernaturally and you came out of it. So see, I, I need to clarify something. We're all going to experience what could be called bad things. But it's not really a bad thing unless it has a bad outcome. Because God says, all things work for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So it could look like a very bad situation. You know, maybe you got fired from your job. You don't know how you're going to support your family. But all of a sudden, God gives you this, this witty idea and you start your own business. And the next thing you know, you're bringing millions of dollars into the kingdom of God. What started out as a bad thing wasn't a bad thing because it had a good outcome. So here's the other reason that bad things happen to good people. We get weary, we get discouraged, and we quit. We give up. So that's why the Bible says, if you don't quit, you win. When hard times thing, when hard times come, when things get tough, you don't give up. The Bible says to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. When the trial of your faith is at its peak, let patience have its perfect work. Patience literally means consistency. You keep on living your life in line with the word of God. Keep on loving that person that has rejected you. Keep on giving even out of your luck. Keep on believing for healing even though you may feel terrible. Come on, church. Keep on doing what you can do. Don't back off what you believe. And the word says the day is coming when you will be perfect and complete, standing in the will of God. That, my friends, is where I hope this journey is going to take every single one of us hearing 
comes. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. So dear Lord, I just ask right now for all of my brothers and sisters out there. I, I just pray that this word drops into their spirit because a lot of us out there, we, we believe in you. You know, we've accepted you as our personal savior. We say, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. But Lord, we've not seen these things, these, these, these spiritual laws, this faith activated in our life. And so Lord, I just pray right now, no matter what situation, what circumstances we may be going through right now, I know there's people that are, that, that are going through some extremely difficult times right now. And Lord, I pray that the key of these spiritual laws will unlock their faith, that they can see and understand that there is the answer. There is my answer. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Lord, I'm gonna keep speaking the word of God until I see it come, pa come to pass in my life. That's what I encourage you to do right now. If you're going through a tough time, if you are feeling pain in your body, pain in your spirit, in your emotions, I'm asking you right now to take the word of God, find your answer, and start declaring the word. Unlock the door to your faith, and let's see incredible, wonderful things happen in our lives. God loves you. I love you. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't quit, because God has our back. God bless you. And I will see you next time.